Man. Hello again, and first of all, a very happy new year to you all. I hope you're all doing well. In this new series of short little videos for 2021, I thought it'd be interesting to take a little closer look at the worms, the earthworms and composting worms that we all know and love and care so much about. So we're going to start at the head, which, let's face it, only its mother could love, work our way down to its pert little bottom, and look at all the segments in between. So starting today, we're going to look at the first segment of the worm, which is its head essentially, and that comprises of two parts, the peristomium and the prostomium. Now, peri just means to surround, stome, stoma, just means a mouth or an opening or cavity, and when you have a suffix eum in biology, it just means a mass. So the first segment is made up of a mass surrounding the mouth, and above the mouth, we have the prostomium. And pro, in this case, just means in advance of or ahead of. So you have a little lumpy piece of flesh sitting on top of the mouth, which protrudes ahead of the mouth. So that's what the prostomium is. Now, you can see from this schematic here that it's packed with nerve receptors. And these are referred to as epidermal receptors. So this is an incredibly sensitive part of the worm's anatomy. If we take a little closer look, this was taken under a, an electron microscope. You can see the U-shaped mouth opening here, just where the tracer is cursing around it. And sitting above the mouth opening is what we're interested in today, the prostomium. And if you look closely, you'll see where it's peppered with these epidermal receptors. Now, the prostomiums are all different shapes and sizes depending on the species of the worm. They fall largely into four categories. You have the prolobic prostomium. You can see here that the prostomium has its own separating groove and it doesn't really extend into the peristomium. And here's a worm with a prolobic prostomium. The second type of prostomium is the epilobic. And you can see the difference between this one now and the first one, where the prostomium is now reaching back into the peristomium, but it doesn't quite meet the groove at the end, marking the end of the first segment. The third type of prostomium that we have is the tanilobic prostomium. And you can see that the tongue here extends all the way back to the groove, marking the difference between the first and second segment. And we have a picture of that here. This is a tanilobic prostomium. And the fourth and final type of prostomium is the zygolobic prostomium. And we have a picture of that here. And you can see that there's no defining marks or tongue into the first segment. Now, when it comes to classifying worms, the type of prostomium that the worm has is an important descriptor. And here's some examples taken from Earthworms of Missouri by Olson. And you can see here he describes Essenia fetida as having a prostomium epilobic and half. So the tongue extends halfway into the peristomium. In another example, a worm we know and love so well, the Lumbricus terrestris, he says prostomium tanilobic. And that's the prostomium where the tongue extends all the way back to the groove between the first and the second segment. Here's some better pictures. This is an epilobic. And this is a tanilobic head. Being as sensitive as it is, it's important to the worm because it helps it to understand what kind of environment it's in. It can close off the mouth when the worm is resting and it can help the worm to push its way through the compost and the soil. And the epidermal receptors that it's covered in helps the worm to react to moisture, light, pH, vibrations and touch. And some worm species even use their prostomium to help them drag their dinner home to their middens. Next week, we'll take a look at the worm's legs. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that very quick look at the prostomium. As always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.